Hey! Yeah, you. Are you new to the game, or maybe you're a veteran but have been living under a rock the past few years and are confused when you hear these weird terms like GCD, OGCD, two mins, drifting, weaving, ah! What does it all mean? Why can't people just be clear with their words? Well, lucky for you, in this video I'm going to teach you exactly what those weird terms 14 boomers come up with. Let's start with the repeat offender and what people just can't stop commenting on my old guide videos with, the global cooldown. This includes your weapon skills and spells, all sharing a base cooldown of 2.5 seconds which can be reduced through the skill or spell speed stat. Some of these GCDs are locked behind a gauge requirement and some do have a cooldown of their own on top of the GCD. Gnashing Fan Combo and Gunbreaker is a good example, which then leads me into the ABC. Not to be confused with the alphabetical ABC, I'm not your caretaker, please. On FF14, this means always be casting. This goes for melees and casters. You always want to keep that GCD rolling when there is an enemy to target, including ranged attacks and resource builders. Which reminds me, don't neglect your resource builders during phase downtime either. Some jobs can still benefit from no enemy to attack, like Monk's Meditation, Samurai's Meditate, and Black Mage's Umbral Soul, just for example. Then we have the OGCD, meaning off global cooldown. The game refers to these as abilities. All of your abilities have individual cooldowns. These include defensive cooldowns, healing cooldowns, and damaging cooldowns. While on the topic of abilities, we have raid buffs. These are abilities that will increase everyone's damage output by buffing the entire party or debuffing the enemy, also referred to as two mins or just two minute cooldowns. These include Scholar's Chain Stratagem, Astrologian's Divination, Monk's Brotherhood, Dragoon's Battle Litany and Dragon Sight, Ninja's Mug, Reaper's Arcane Circle, Bard's Battle Voice and Radiant for Now, Dancer's Technical Step and Devilment, Summoner's Searing Light, and finally, Red Mage's Embolden. Wow, that's a lot. And then next up, this may seem obvious to some of you, but for those who are new to MMOs, you might wonder what things such as AoEs and Raid Wides mean, and the difference between avoidable and unavoidable damage. AoE is short for area of effect. This includes your own and enemies AoE attacks and debuffs. These can range from avoidable AoEs, usually indicated by a visual effect, or unavoidable AoEs or damage, also referred to as raid wides because they hit the entire raid group and cannot be avoided. While on the topic of damaging AoEs, let's talk about stacks, spreads, pairs, light parties, clock spots, and color pairs. Most of these terms are self-explanatory, but they do tie well in together and you're going to need this information going into the game. Stacks require either the whole party to stack together or form light parties to stack. Light parties consist of four players each, separated by having one tank, one healer, and two DPS in each light party. Groups are named accordingly. Group 1 for main tank, healer 1, melee 1, and ranged 1, and the other being group 2 for the off tank, healer 2, melee 2, and ranged 2, all of which will be shortened to MT, OT, H1, H2, M1, M2, R1, and R2. If you end up with one less melee in your group, that's okay. One of the range can fulfill the role of being M1 or M2 and will be considered the fake melee. These groups can also be separated by a role for some mechanics, like support being one light party and DPS being the other, support referring to tanks and healers. Spreads are when every player will be targeted by an AoE, that is either a cleave or circle AoE. For these, we typically have clock spots, with each player having a position around the arena. Imagine the arena is a 12 hour clock, with north being 12, and south being 6. Each player will have a predefined position, but you don't have to worry too much about a literal clock. Most groups will use waymarks, and just familiarize yourself with your waymark. Speaking of waymarks, we have pairs or partners, however you want to word it. These mechanics will either target all the support or all DPS. So to solve this, we'll need to pair supports with DPS. Before starting a high-end encounter, you'll usually assign yourself with a partner. These can be done through which group you are or colored pairs. For groups, tanks and healers are always paired with a melee or ranged accordingly, like the main tank being being paired with M1 and the off tank being paired with M2 for example or color pairs. Remember your clock spots and having your own waymark? Well, for colored pairs, all you have to do is remember your waymark and the other waymark of the same color, like how 1 and A are the same color. These two will always be paired for these mechanics. I guess I should also mention baiting. Some mechanics will require a player to forcefully be targeted by a mechanic, and we call this baiting, like the boss targeting the furthest away or closest player. And then we have personals. If you hear this term, it refers to abilities that heal or mitigate damage on yourself. These should be used when you need an extra heal or to mitigate damage to help you healers out. These include melees and physical ranged second wind, melees bloodbath, 
Monk's Riddle of Earth, Ninja's Shade Shift, Samurai's Third Eye, Reaper's Arcane Crest, Black Mage's Mana Ward, and Summoner's Radiant Aegis. While on the topic of healing and mitigating, we also have Party Mitts, short for Party Mitigation. Same idea as Personals, you want to use these for things such as Raid Wides, Stacks, Spreads, Pairs, etc. Really in any form of outgoing damage. When you're doing Pug content, don't worry too much about where you're placing these. Just make sure to use them and keep it consistent on where you use them in an encounter, so your healers can get used to what mitt you're using when and where. These include Tanks Reprisals, Paladins Divine Veil and Passage of Arms, Warriors Shake It Off, Dark Knight and Gunbreaker's Dark Missionary and Heart of Light, Melee's Faint, Monk's Mantra, Reaper's Arcane Crest, Physical Ranged Trobador, Tactician and Shield Samba, Bard's Nature's Mini, Machinist's Dismantle, Dancer's Curing Waltz and Improvisation, Magical Ranged Addle, and Red Mage's Magic Barrier. I didn't include Healer's Kit because I'd be listing almost all of their abilities and this is kind of their main job. But you tanks and DPS are just as responsible for pressing these buttons. The biggest mistake I see some players make with party mitts and personals is just saving them for when they think stuff will get bad. Which just isn't the way to use these. You want to use these to avoid those exact situations. Trust me, it helps a lot. Then we have a few other things like the opener. This is just how you begin a fight, so to speak, synergizing your buffs and abilities in such a way for the highest potential potency. After the opener, we have the odd minute burst and even minute burst window. The odd minute burst window is our weaker burst window, which includes our one minute cooldowns. Meanwhile, the even burst window is our stronger burst, as this includes our one minutes and two minute cooldowns together alongside party buffs. Then we have the reopener. This is typically another way to just say the even minute burst window, but this could also mean a true reopener, which means you'll have all of your cooldowns back up during a two minute burst window, but only really a few jobs benefit from this, like Dark Knight with their Salted Earth and Monk with their Riddle of Wind, which are both on 90 second cooldowns. I think that's the only two abilities that actually are damaging and on a 90 second cooldown. Drifting. No, not that drifting. On FF14, it simply means you misaligned your cooldowns with the rest of your kit or party raid buffs. For example, if I was playing Dark Knight and I didn't save my gauge for Living Shadow and it just came off cooldown, but I can't use it as my gauge is at zero, so I need to farm 50 gauge and it sits on cooldown for about 10 seconds, this will drift my Living Shadow out of raid buffs for the entirety of the encounter, and the only possible fix here is realigning in downtime. In most cases, you never want to hold on to a big buff like Living Shadow just to purposely realign it, as you will potentially miss a usage and that is a significant potency loss. So if you do end up drifting, in most cases you just have to accept that fate and you will be drifted for this entire encounter. OGCD Weaving this is when you use an OGCD in between your GCD cooldown, the only realistic way to actually use OGCDs. Most tanks and melee jobs can weave two OGCDs in between every GCD window, with few exceptions. We call this double weaving. Healers and casters can, for the most part, fit one OGCD between each cast. We call this single weaving, and two OGCDs if they use an instant cast. Do note that casters are quite unique in this regard, with different cast times and instant abilities, so this is just something you're going to have to mess with yourself, like how red mages have dual cast every other cast. Then there's triple and quad weaving. This is not something we want to catch ourselves doing and is mostly a meme, but honestly it can happen to the best of us. Just try to avoid it as much as possible. GCD clipping. This is if you use too many OGCDs or use an OGCD too late and get animation locked, you can clip into your GCD which can result in a potency loss if done consistently throughout an encounter. To avoid clipping into your GCD, identify how many OGCDs you can weave between GCD windows and also identify the animation lock of some OGCDs as they can also clip into your GCD if used too late into the GCD window. A good example of this is Dragoon's jumps if you suffer high latency. There's some advanced ways to get rid of GCD clipping as well and this is slide casting and max melee. Slide casting mostly applies to casters and healers. This is when you move near the end of your cast but it hasn't quite finished yet. But due to how the servers work, the cast will not be interrupted. As there are various cast times, you can move too early and interrupt the cast. There are two ways about this. Either individually learn each cast on when to move or simply put an emote somewhere on your hotbar and wait for the emote to glow up. When this happens, Happens, it's safe to move without your cast being interrupted. Max melee applies to tanks and melee DPS. This is when you go as far as possible from an enemy, but still close enough to keep your GCD rolling. The reason for doing this varies, like a boss using an AoE around it, but leaving enough room for max melee, or if you need to bait a certain mechanic, but still want to maintain uptime, just to list a few examples. Slide casting and max melee are two important skills to have to fully maximize your damage output, which is important, especially in a raid environment, because Final Fantasy is all about that sweet, sweet damage. Kitchen sinking. 
Imagine you just throw all of your dishes into the sink at once. It's quite surprising how much this analogy just makes sense. This mostly applies to tanks and healers. For tanks, this is when you use every defensive cooldown except your invulnerability to negate incoming damage, like from a tank buster. A mostly taboo strategy as it's better to spread out your cooldowns as a tank, but it is sometimes required for fights like some tank busters in Savage and Ultimate raids, or when you know you won't need the cooldown back up for the next 90 seconds or so. For healers, it's kind of the same deal, using all of your healing and mitigation tools at once. Again, this is mostly taboo, but there have been some cases where it's proved to be valuable to do so. Either way, it's good to know what these terms mean when you hear it next time, and that goes for all of these terms. By this point, you should be well versed in the most important terms and analogy FF14 players use when it comes to gameplay mechanics. Anyways, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching, and like always, a big thank you to my Patreons for supporting the channel. More information about Patreon in the description below, but with that, oh, before I forget, I'm going to make this a video series. Boomer Raid Terms next. Maybe it's already out for you if you're watching late. Anyways, have a nice day. Bye. Oh, and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.